Hello YouTube, I am Matt Tastic, and by watching this video, you will learn the basic fundamentals of holding the jaw harp, or the Jews harp, or whatever you want to call it. But in all seriousness, the jaw harp is known all around the globe by many different names. In fact, my Sicilian friends tell me it's called a Maranzano, which sounds way cooler than a jaw harp. So, if you call it by a different name, I want to know. Leave it in the comments below. Now, the most important step of getting a nice, loud sound out of a jaw harp is by first buying a quality instrument, okay? Um, if you guys have this model right here, it's a very popular model of jaw harp. runs about $5. You can get it online a lot of places. Uh, and you're having a hard time getting a nice sound out of it. Here's what you need to do. Throw it in the trash and buy a nicer jaw harp. Why? Because it does not create a very loud sound. See, compared to a similar priced and similar sized jaw harp, it's night and day. It really is. So if you're having a hard time getting a good sound out of it, you might want to check your instrument and maybe upgrade a little bit. It won't cost you a lot and it'll make a huge difference. You know the phrase, garbage in, garbage out. I get mine from Operton Pro. It's a company that sells a huge variety of jaw harps from all around the world. And the prices are very reasonable, so check them out, www.operton.pro, and get yourself a quality instrument. So different jaw harps come in different shapes and sizes, so you'll need to adjust your handling for each jaw harp, but they will still have the basic fundamentals. So let's talk grip. So in your non-dominant hand, you're going to use your thumb to stabilize the jaw harp, okay? So your thumb should follow the contour of the jaw harp here. As you bring your hand and fold it over, your palm of your hand is going to be securing the back of the jaw harp here, like the back top of it. And then you're going to wrap your index finger down. Make sure not to touch this reed here though, okay? That's going to dampen the sound and make it actually a very bad sound. And as your index finger is pulling it down, it's actually applying force back to the palm of your hand. So it's, it's bringing it inward to this part right here. And here you go. So if you're doing it correctly, it should feel secure and you're not inhibiting the sound in any way. Now, speaking of sound inhibiting, this is something that's very important. You cannot be squeezing on the neck here at all because what happens is this. Yeah, hear that? That's because the reed is hitting the sides because you're squeezing it too hard on the neck. So all the force to keep it secure should be at the end of the jaw harp, this key shape right here of the frame. That way you're not inhibiting any sound or any action of the reed here. So now we'll try it with a larger, more narrow jaw harp. So I'm gonna put on my thumb here, I'm gonna wrap my palm around it, I have my index finger coming down, making sure I'm not touching the reed here. And the whole time I am applying force to the back of my palm here, this spot right here. There you go. That's a secure grip. All right, now let's talk teeth. You are in no way biting down on the jaw harp, okay? You are resting it against the front of your teeth and securing it with your lips. What I mean is you can't have loose, soft lips. That's not a good technique for good sound. So what you want to do is put it against your teeth like this and then kind of like a, like that. And then once you flex them, bring them down and you want to make that seal with it. Because what that does is your lips are a barrier between the sound vibrating inside your mouth, which is the way the jaw harp is designed. Your body is part of the acoustics. If you don't have a good seal, the sound doesn't isn't directly focused in your mouth and it's spilling out into space. And so it's just not good technique. So no soft lips, keep them tight. That's what you wanna do. That's called an amateur in the music world. And you also wanna make sure you're leaving enough space for the jaw harp reed to go in and out of your teeth. Uh, it's kind of scary at first, thinking that you're not leaving enough space and you might like hit one coming in and out but really it's not something I worry about anymore because like once you develop good technique, you know you're leaving enough space so it's not gonna happen. 
However, when I was about 16, so about 12 years ago, uh, I did chip my tooth while playing the jaw harp because I didn't leave enough space. But that's only because I had a lousy jaw harp that was poor quality, it was quiet, so I was trying to get a louder sound out of it, so I closed my teeth to make a louder sound and it came back and knocked the tip of my tooth off. But you shouldn't have to worry about that ever because you should never adjust the space in your mouth. I'm talking about the space between your teeth and the jaw harp because you're not moving your teeth up and down when you play the jaw harp, okay? You're not doing that. You're really only moving your tongue and your throat up and down inside of your mouth. That's primarily how you adjust the pitches of the jaw harp. So you should never be varying the distance in between. The jaw harp. So if you never vary the distance and you leave enough space, you'll never have to worry about chipping your teeth. There you go. And you want to leave about, about half an inch or uh, a little more than a centimeter of space. That should be fine. And remember, this is a how to hold the jaw harp video. If you're interested in learning more techniques on how to play the jaw harp, make sure you check out my video called How to Play the Jaw Harp. All right, moving on now, where to position the jaw harp in your mouth. I put the frame three fourths of the way through to the right side of my mouth. So right here, okay? So it's a little space over here and it's different than putting in the middle because there's less surface area there, so it's less secure on your mouth. And also, it's not as loud because less of the reed is in your mouth as well. So three fourths of the way over like this. So there you go. If you follow these instructions, you should have a secure, safe, and loud jaw harp. Thank you for watching. I am Adtastic. Make sure you check out my How to Play the Jaw Harp video. And as always, subscribe. I got more stuff coming your way.